All right, let's take a tour of the bones of the upper extremity. We're going to start with the sternum located at the midline of the body and superior and lateral to the sternum, we will see the clavicle. Okay, so now we're going to blow this up and we'll take a better look at the clavicle here and we'll see that we have the sternal end of the clavicle as well as the clavicular end of the clavicle. And then lateral to the clavicle, we have the scapula. So we can take a look at our scapula right here and some key bony landmarks to know in terms of the scapula. One is going to be the acromion process right here. Second is going to be the coracoid process. And then third right here is going to be the glenoid fossa. Pull this back out. Then distal to the scapula, we have the humerus. Again, let's blow up, take a closer look like here. We have the humeral head, we have the shaft, and then what I really want you to know as well, which is going to be important later on, is to know where the epicondyles are located at here and here on the humerus. Now we have two bones that are distal to the humerus. We have the ulna, which in the anatomical position is on the medial side, and we have the radius, which in the anatomical position is going to be on the lateral side. So because there's so much motion at the shoulder in all three planes, the medial and the lateral side can get a little confusing. So oftentimes for the arm, they'll talk about the radial side or they'll talk about the ulnar side. And if we go now to the distal end of the radius here, we can see the styloid process located here and then the ulnar styloid process over here. And then of course, distal to the radius and the ulna, we have the hand. And the model here is a little bit tricky in order to see all the bones of the hand. So we'll take a look at that on a static slide. I apologize for the rapid change in the background colors, but these were the best pictures I could find to show the individual bones of the hand. To start off with, let's go ahead and organize the hand into different regions. Most proximally, you can see here in purple are the carpal bones. Now the carpal bones are arranged in roughly two rows of four bones each. And we'll take a closer look at those in a second. Then distal to those carpal bones, we have the metacarpal bones shown here in gold. And there are five metacarpal bones, one for each digit. Distal to the metacarpals, we have the proximal phalanges. And there's going to be one phalange for each finger, plus the thumb. Now, there is no intermediate phalange for the thumb. There's only a distal phalange for the thumb. But for the other four fingers, we see that we have a proximal phalange, an intermediate phalange, and then a distal phalange. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at those carpal bones. As I mentioned previously, the carpal bones are broken up into two rows of approximately four bones each. Starting on the radial side, the proximal carpal row starts with the scaphoid bone shown in red, followed by the lunate bone in blue, followed by the triquetrum bone in green, and the piezoform bone is tightly bound on the palmar aspect of that triquetrum bone. Then for the distal carpal row, again, starting on the radial side, we have the trapezium in pink, followed by the trapezoid in gray. Then we have the capitate in green, and then we end up with the hamate in that purplish type color. And there you have the bones of the hand. And that concludes our tour of the bones of the upper extremity.